But Brian, you actually got to take a look at an electric vehicle that was a bit more practical. Yes, a bit more practical, a little bit <laughs> less um, dangerous. You know, there's not a lot of blades spinning around on it. Uh, I recently got to go down to Brisbane, uh, just south of San Francisco, where they are making an elect electric bicycle. I want to say it's a motorbike. So okay. it's not quite a motorcycle, electric motorcycle, and it's not quite an electric bicycle. It's kind of a hybrid in between. So, okay, what's, well, how do you define each of that? What, what makes an electric bike? What makes an electric motorcycle? And then what does it mean to fall in between? So what would make an electric motorcycle would be something like the Zero DS that we reviewed right. on Before You Buy. That's where like three years ago. Yeah. That was, yeah, like three years ago where um, it was about $15,000, mm -hmm. had a huge battery, um, but you had pegs. You know, everything about it was a motorcycle. You could ride it on the street. You had to register it. You, had, you have to have a license to ride it. Um, an electric bicycle would be something a lot lighter, smaller size, you don't have to register it, top speed of 20 miles per hour, um, because I think once you do over that, you have to have it registered and stuff. Ah, got it. And so what Bolt Motorbikes has done is they've built an electric motorbike that has pedals. So it has the feel of a bicycle, but the dynamics of, like it has a throttle and a disc front brake and motorcycle tires and it all the whole package weighs about 140 pounds well, i don't get it why why make that hybrid why not just go with one or the other so this is basically like the killer errand, errand runner machine for like a urban environment so if you want to go up hills it's powerful enough to go up hills but it's easy enough to ride if you've ever ridden a bi bicycle you could hop on it and it um the range is about I think between 35 to 20 miles per hour, or 20 miles, depending on how you ride it. And it has bicycle pedals on it, so you can pedal it like a bike, and that also allows it to not be, you have to register it or have a license for it. Ah, uh, okay, okay. I, I think actually you, you've, you've got some B-roll, so we can take I a do. look at what it actually looks like, and, and then maybe you can explain what, what it is that we're seeing. Okay, so if you uh, roll the B-roll, we, me and Car, our, uh, one of our engineers, went down to check out where they manufacture these. Oh, it looks it was, like an old Indian. Well, so it's based off something called, a, I think it's called a Pug or something. A it's Pug? A Pug? I, I don't know. <laughs> it's like a moped. It's basically a okay. moped. Um, so we went down to Brisbane where they're constructing these, and Bolt was actually an Indiegogo that they got funded through that, and it's really cool to see the production process of everything. But so these are all handcrafted? These are all handcrafted. The, um, the Nathan, the owner and creator of the company, actually has his PhD in um, mechanical engineering, and he had started at working at zero, and then he had helped them uh, increase their production. So they're not cranking out bikes every day, but they're getting to the point where they can build two, two or three bikes in a day or two. Um, and they have this kind of cafe racer retro style to them. Um, and that is really conducive Ooh. for keeping it light. I think one of my favorite things about riding it... looks it, fun. It was super fun. Um, so the electric motor is about the same... Uh, I would put it, if you were going to compare it to like a gas bike, it would be somewhere around 100 cc's. Really? Uh, yeah, That's so... Well. When you Wait, what's the range? Like how far can you get if you were riding like you're riding right now? So if you're riding like this, I would say probably 20, mi 20 25 miles. That's not bad. Um, yeah. And this thing powers up hills and stuff like that. It does um, it do regen break braking? It does. So the front, you have a disc brake, which is really nice. Um, it worked really well. Uh, and then the rear is actually the regen braking, which is the left lever on there. And so when you squeeze that, um, it starts the regenerative process. And the harder you squeeze it, the more it'll it'll start braking. And it's a lot, lot smoother than some of the other uh, regenerative braking so systems. So it doesn't want to throw you over the handlebars. Yeah, no, no, no. It's, uh, it's very subtle and controllable. Like, how, how much does this thing weigh? I mean, I, I'm thinking, is this something like I could put into the back of my car? Yes. Uh, it's, uh, they were picking them up. I mean, it's 140 pounds, so it's still pretty heavy. But like, maybe, maybe it could be a lot heavy. That, I'm, I'm gathering much of that is the battery. Right. And you can, so one of the cool features they have is that the, the battery system is modular and what you do um, oh, yeah. is you flip a tab and you pull back a lever and it detaches the batteries from the hookup and then you can basically pull them out like a little briefcase and each battery weighs about oh, 15 pounds that's cool so and I, I was thinking that it was gonna be kind of top-heavy because the batteries are basically where a gas tank would be and there's not the only thing below it is basically the the electric motor 
but it wasn't top heavy at all and i think because it's so light it just it steers like a bicycle but you've got the throttle like a motorcycle and so it's very like controllable Th um, does it have that typical that electric vehicle low end torque where it just like wants to snap your spine if you just no take it? no it doesn't. it doesn't i mean I, it, what they've done is they've um they programmed it so you just get like a linear you know uh torque okay. yeah. band off of the um off the line. That's a safety thing, really. Because I mean, you'll. It's definitely a safety. If thing. you take a typical electric motor that can power someone like this, a hundred cc equivalent, you would spin the back tire if you just right. If you just want throttle up. Well, and uh, so Nathan pointed out, he said, you know, you can do a wheelie on it. Actually, <laughs> you hold in the regenerative braking lever and then you just floor it. Uh, considering I oh. <laughs> <laughs> see, I couldn't do that. Uh, that's Nathan, the guy, um, the owner of the company. See, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't want that coming over the top of me. <laughs> that's called a stoppy, no, and uh, no. he not only is he like really passionate about bikes, but he's super knowledgeable. So uh, we had a lot of fun going down there. Um, I'm not gonna say it's per without problem because it is. It's five thousand four hundred seventy-five dollars. Okay, that's a lot, but it's that's actually not. Right, bad. you have to think in the realm of right. like, like electric vehicles. That's actually not that bad, considering like a full electric motorcycle is going to cost you over twelve grand. Right. Uh, you may be able to find an electric bicycle for a little bit less than that, but um, they've really put a lot of forethought into how they w manage the batteries, and you can lock it up like you would a normal bike. Like, right. a, um, and what else was there about it? That like, oh, the <laughs> it was kind of a neat feature to unlock the bike. One of the co-founders' father was actually the guy who invented the bop it, and <laughs> so when you the uh, start on pre process is you like you turn on the bike and then to unlock it you can customize what you do to start it, it, pull it, bop so it. You turn the throttle, you tap the brake, you press the button, and then it'll come on, or you can unlock it with your phone. So that's a little Mad Max. Yeah, oh, left, left, right, right, left, right, turn. Twist. Yeah, exactly. Pop it, twist it, <laughs> pull it. Uh, so they came on the screensavers. If you want to find out some more information or watch that segment that we did with Leo, but I think he's he was convinced to maybe get one for the studio, which I would be up for. Well, I mean, consider this. That's the same price as a loaded Segway. Yes. And you'll get further and faster on this than you will on a Segway. Right, and that's why I think this is something for if you live in an urban City, like city, basically San Francisco. If you're somewhere like San Francisco where there's hills and mm. you know there's not a lot of, not everybody has a garage. Right. Uh, the best way to get around the city is on a bicycle, and this kind of treads the line where you can like go up hills on it. You can don't have to register it, um, and like any other electric vehicle, the initial cost is all the battery stuff. Right. Uh, but you don't. The only things you'll ever have to do is clean the chain, you know, change the brake pads. There's no oil, there's no like engine tuning or anything like that. It's, it's always interesting whenever a technology like this comes out, there's, there's that moment of, okay, this is cool, this would be fun, and then the questions of, but what if I did this? And what if mm -hmm. I was in this situation? And what if I, this Is happened? it practical for me? Is it practical? And, and I yeah. think you know, for me, the Segway is really like that. I like riding the Segway. Mm -hmm. I, it's a fun vehicle to, to, to drive. It's, it's actually very useful. I like that little nine bot I found at CES because I like the robot mode. Mm -hmm. But then the question is, is that where I'm going to spend a thousand dollars? Right. And like, will well, it end go, up sitting in my garage? <laughs> yeah. So if you were someone who had a choice between a Segway and this, like, what would you do? I'd probably go with this. That's what my choice was, too. Yeah. And you can have a passenger on it, too. Well, so. I mean, I think I am a passenger. <laughs> so maybe right. not me. You could have a passenger. Yeah. I think I would side seat myself. Well, and, you know, I could get, like, a little sidecar or something for, for my dog. <laughs> and he can ride around with me. Actually, you wouldn't need it. You just put him in a backpack, the little corgi backpack. Yeah. Like, aerodynamic. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that that's the most um, you know thing I've been excited about most recently with the electric stuff. I, I, I'm wondering if if the the real advancements in EV they're not going to come from the big blockbustery type releases, but from things like this. Because I, I could see GM, Ford, Volvo, whatever, saying, "Well, we've got the next electric vehicle that people are going to be really really excited by." But mm -hmm. There is a growing group of companies that are manufacturing EVs for specific use cases. They will not take you from city to city. No. They, you, know, you cannot use it as your commuter vehicle from San Francisco to Petaluma, but it is so much more practical if you, say, live in San Francisco or you exactly. live in San Jose or Dallas or Chicago because you can take it into your apartment.
because it will take you to work and back on a single charge mm -hmm. uh, because it's not so expensive that you're always going to be worried about it getting lost or destroyed. Exactly. Uh, and mm, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. It's interesting times. Yeah, no, definitely. And I think uh, for even just me living in Petaluma, I'm about 10 minutes away from the studio. It would be fine for me if I had, I would have to have two sets of batteries, I think, where right. I one would, here, one there. Right. So I would charge them at home, ride over to the studio, plug those in, and then before heading home, I put like the studio ver um, ones I have in the bike and then go home. Well, we did see there is one manufacturer at um, at CES that Dickie D interviewed. I think the scooter uh, the thing, right? The Gogoro. Gogoro, right? The it's a scooter. Right, and they're like developing a battery network. That exactly. I think of it as sort of the, um, the, the bike sharing. Right. program but instead of bike sharing it's battery sharing mm -hmm. so you pull your battery out you plug it in you have a subscription and you swap in the new one right uh, that I mean that would be kind of cool I, yeah. I if I lived if I still lived in DC and they offered that that's something I would definitely subscribe to right so I think uh, we're getting there we need to see things to really like make electric vehicles break out is like quick charging right and expense those are the two biggest yeah. hurdles right now for those things yeah. and once you start giving me a vehicle that Forms like I need it to, mm -hmm. that is as durable and consistent as I expect from the vehicles I drive right now, yeah. and doesn't cost a premium, a crazy premium more, then, then I'll talk. Right, and I think they said it's 27 cents to charge the batteries. That's how much yeah, it costs yeah. for electricity. That's nothing. Yeah. yeah.